Hey Brainiacs, thanks for joining. Today I'd like to discuss how I counsel patients to prepare for brain surgery and the 10 things you can do to ensure your best possible recovery. Number one, get your health in order. No matter what situation and what operation you're facing, preparing your body for the physical toll of brain surgery is an important step in the healing process. Do this first by checking in with your primary care doctor to update them on your condition and the plan you've created with your neurosurgeon for your treatment. Understand your comorbidities, the term we use for other medical conditions you may have, and how they may affect your recovery. Review what medications you should and shouldn't be taking before the operation and the results of any lab or radiology tests. And finally, make sure you have a clear understanding of what limitations you may have after your operation and be sure you have family or friends available to help if you need it. Number two, diet and exercise. Now it may sound like a cliche, but your brain is greatly affected by your diet and exercise. Focusing early on these factors, the things you can control, will help your body through the operation and speed your recovery. Now there's no magic diet or exercise routine to follow, but a balanced diet full of fruits and vegetables, lean meats and fish, and healthy grains gives your brain the building blocks it needs to heal. While cardiovascular fitness strengthens your heart and lungs and improves blood flow and oxygen delivery to your brain. A balanced diet is all you need. I don't routinely recommend supplements or specific diets beforehand. Number three, curb alcohol and nicotine consumption. Now hopefully this goes without saying, but alcohol and nicotine should be stopped before your operation. Not only are they associated with heart and lung disease, they adversely impact brain healing and recovery. Nicotine and alcohol negatively impact blood flow, nutrient delivery, neurotransmitter release, and immune function, all important components for brain healing. Do your brain a favor and cut these out of your life. I remember one of my patients specifically thanking me after her surgery, not just for removing her tumor, but also for forcing her to take a break from smoking. She quit before the operation and hasn't gone back after almost a year. And it's that sort of change that may actually have a greater effect on your long-term health than anything else. Your heart, lungs, and brain will thank you. Number four, focus on sleep. Now, I may not always be the best at getting enough sleep myself, but for my patients, getting enough sleep is vital. It's normal to feel anxious and nervous the night before an operation, but getting enough Z's in the weeks leading up to your surgery will help your body get into the best possible shape beforehand. The trick is to set up healthy habits before your surgery that you can continue during your recovery and beyond. Number five, review your surgical plan with your neurosurgeon. Make sure you understand what operation you're having and why, and what to expect during your hospitalization and recovery. This is a critical question to clarify with your neurosurgeon, and I'll put a link in the description below to another video where I discuss the five questions every patient should ask their neurosurgeon. Having peace of mind that you have a great plan in place with your surgeon can offer reassurance when you're feeling scared or anxious, and it never hurts to get things in writing. Remember that you are your greatest advocate, so make sure you feel comfortable and clear on what to expect. Number six, consider getting a second opinion. I've always told my patients that a second opinion never hurts, and this is your brain after all. You need to feel like you found the right person for you, and only you can decide that. As a courtesy, it's good to be upfront with your neurosurgeon that you're getting a second opinion, and you shouldn't be afraid that they'll react negatively. Any neurosurgeon insecure about you getting a second opinion is not the right doctor for you. You should feel comfortable and confident in your neurosurgeon and the surgical plan they've recommended. Oftentimes getting reassurance from another doctor that they agree with the original plan or disagree and why they would do things differently can help you better understand your options. You wanna feel like you're in the best hands possible, so be proactive about seeking advice, ask a lot of questions, and go with your gut. It also never hurts to reach out to other patients for their opinions. The internet is full of a lot of nonsense and you need to be careful about what information you trust, but generally other patients will be some of your best resources for getting an honest evaluation of a neurosurgeon. Consider joining a patient support group and asking for advice. Number seven, review treatment plans with other doctors who will be caring for you. In addition to seeing your primary care doctor, if you're facing a problem where brain surgery is just one step in your care, be sure you understand what other treatments you may require. My brain tumor patients often need additional chemotherapy and radiation, so meeting with your oncologist and radiation oncologist beforehand will help you anticipate the additional care you'll need to receive. It's the same story for patients undergoing surgery for epilepsy, Parkinson's disease, dystonia, or for vascular problems such as aneurysms or arteriovenous malformations. You may depend on neurologists, radiologists, and even other neurosurgeons for post-operative care. The more comfortable and familiar you feel with everyone treating you, the better your recovery. Number eight, be with family and friends. 
Surround yourself with the support and love of your family and friends. And don't be afraid to ask for their help if you need it. It's okay to be selfish. Everyone will understand that it may take a while for things to get back to normal. You need to focus on you during the lead up to your surgery, your physical, emotional, and mental health. Spending time with loved ones is the best way to feel supported, cared for, and prepared for what's next. Going through brain surgery is a very vulnerable process, and I firmly believe that the patients I've treated with large and supportive families and friend groups bounce back even better from surgery. Number nine, focus on your mental health. Do the activities you love, those that make you feel good, the ones that keep you grounded and whole. I'm an eternal optimist and a complete believer in the power of positivity. Staying positive by focusing on what makes you happy will bring you peace and optimism and help you practice the strength that you'll need for your recovery. Number 10, take a deep breath. At the end of the day, remind yourself that you have a good plan in place, common goals with your neurosurgeon, and trust in their care. Take a deep breath, stay positive and optimistic. And remember, you're not alone in this. So what do you think? Anything I missed? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you fellow Brainiacs for joining. Keep an open mind and I'll see you next time.